Good morning. My name is Matt Roberts, Distribution Manager at Cobra Investment Partners. I'm joined today by Rob Frost, Head of Investment at OC Funds Management, for a quick recap of the last quarter, which has seen the OC funds bounce strongly, what themes are playing out in the market, and how the portfolios are positioned. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Matty. How are you? Good, thank you. Rob, I know the team has been busy, but we are now in mid-July. It's normally the quiet time of year with the companies in blackout ahead of full year reporting in August. Have things quiet down? Uh, Matt, are you quite right? It's normally um, pretty quiet for us in July, entering blackout ahead of the August reporting season. This year has been quite different, uh, a lot going on. We've had the capital raisings have continued uh, into early July. We've had a lot of them in the June quarter. We've, we've got a bunch of IPOs trying to launch. There's been a raft of uh, updates from small companies giving um, earnings guidance to the market. And also we've seen the coronavirus outbreak in Victoria, which has led us to do some portfolio repositioning. Um, fortunately, the, we've got an experienced team at OC and um, holding us in good stead through this period. Um, I guess a good place to start is that the, the capital raisings. The ones that we saw earlier in July tended to be more from, from companies that were raising capital because they, they required money to get them through the pandemic. More recently, we've seen raisings from companies like Temple and Webster and, and Kogan, who have been structural beneficiaries of, of COVID-19. These companies are raising, um, they're doing very well. Uh, they're looking at strategic growth opportunities down the track and they're rattling the tin for that. Um, we've also seen a wide number of, of, of earnings updates. In particular, a lot of the consumer discretionary companies have updated the market recently. And um, surprisingly, or, or maybe not given the low expectations, um, that, the, that the numbers they're putting out have exceeded market expectations. So I think companies like Harvey Norman, um, Kogan, Temple and Webster, um, businesses like that, Accent Group, um, they're seeing the benefit of the stimulus money from the government and early withdrawals from super, which has obviously been good for consumer discretionary. And on top of that, we've had a coronavirus outbreak in, in Victoria, which um, has potentially got implications for the, for the whole economy and um, that's leading us to do some repositioning. How are you thinking about the market and the portfolio with the coronavirus infection rate spiking again in Victoria and in other places around the world? Uh, Matty, uh, I guess um, with an eye to risk management, we, uh, we, we plan for the worst and hope for the best. But, um, you know, we certainly think that the OC portfolio is in, in a better position than it was going into the start of the pandemic when we were along a bunch of travel stocks, mining services, and um, had quite a lot of financial services exposure. Um, <clears throat> that said, that the recent outbreak in, um, in Melbourne and shown just how virulent um, the coronavirus is and um, just how easily it can spread after it's been subdued. Um, the decision to lock down metropolitan Melbourne is obviously going to have big implications for the Victorian economy and will certainly derail the federal government's plans to get the economy back on track later this year. Um, in terms of the portfolio, um, there's been a fair bit of activity recently. Um, we've been tilting the portfolio more towards companies that beneficiaries of the pandemic and who can grow their earnings in this sort of environment and, and away from businesses that benefit from the opening up of the global economy because that certainly seems to be uh, a little bit further off at the moment. Um, one sector that's certainly been topical is the travel space. Uh, readers of our monthlies and quarterlies will be aware that we participated in the raising of the flight centre and uh, we bought some more Webjet and the recapitalisations early in April. Those stocks have performed particularly well and have been increasingly rallying as the economy has been opening up. In fact, both stocks are up over 100% from their raising prices in mid-June and we actually use that as an opportunity to exit those stocks. Um, clearly, with the flare-ups and the, the, the infection rates still elevated around the world, there's a lot of people who won't be undertaking international travel until a coronavirus vaccine is found. And, domestic border shut, we think it's a challenging space at the moment. And what are the key sectors of the market or what are the key themes do you think will outperform in this environment? Um, um, Matty, the, the pandemic's likely to have major implications for how we work, how we travel, how we shop, how we interact socially, all, all 
all manner of things. So <clears throat> we're trying to trying to target the portfolio at um, sectors and companies who might benefit from these trends going forward. Um, in some instances, it's, it's merely just um, an acceleration of some of the structural shifts we've seen in the past. So, so trends such as a movement towards cloud computing, um, the growing use of data, um, I guess um, the shift, the structural shift towards online shopping, um, they're all accelerating as a result of the pandemic. So um, we've got companies such as NextDC in the data center space and and Kogan, which provides an online marketplace, which is rapidly growing its, its user base and seeing a big spike in revenues, um, which are areas of the small cap space that can benefit from, from this, um, this trend. Um, another beneficiary of the COVID pandemic is certainly the household. So, um, you know, if you think of stocks, um, you know, people are spending a lot more time at home. Uh, people aren't spending money on big holidays. They're not buying new cars. So, it's a relatively easy decision for a lot of people to perhaps go out and buy a new set of bed sheets, uh, maybe buy a new TV, a new toaster, or even spend some money on office furniture because you know the home office is becoming a workplace. So um, there's obviously a bunch of small cap companies who are benefiting, like Adairs and um, JB Hi-File, Temple and Webster, um, even Greville Group. So they're the sort of sort of places we're looking to to invest capital at the moment. Um, there's also a bunch of businesses who have raised capital um, early in June, and we think that their quality businesses will survive the pandemic and come out the other side. So someone like perhaps a BAPCOR, who um, may not be an obvious beneficiary, but um, you know they've raised capital, they're reporting very strong numbers in March, March uh, rather May and June. Um, even if we go into another lockdown, as we come out of it, they're going to survive. A lot of their, their competitors may not. And we're going to be increasingly using our cars. Um, people are reluctant to use public transport. They're keeping their cars longer. New car sales are down. So we think um, companies like that that are, that are really good quality businesses and recapitalised um, will ultimately perform well. So that's the sort of areas we're looking at to invest at the moment. Great. Okay. Well, Rob, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the OC funds management, please contact your local Copia distribution manager and thank you for joining us. Stay safe.